What is good, everybody, and welcome to Between Frets, a space where female musicians meet and discuss all things music. I am Sean, Shawnee Sean Marshall, and we have crossed a milestone, which is our one year anniversary since we launched Fret Sisters. And now we are crossing over another milestone, which is our one year anniversary since we launched launch our podcast, um, Between Frets. And, and on the behalf of um, the rest of the founders, we would like to thank all the listeners, all our followers from our social media that's been following us since day one. We also like to thank all our guests that we've been interviewed for our podcast, and and we really appreciate the much love that we, um, y'all been giving us so much, and finally have a platform to showcase women that play so tremendously and been overshadowed much in this music industry so we have been very busy making some new moves um lately not only for fret sisters but our individual moves as well as for me i have my very first festival gig in philly um it's called the women's fest i'm gonna be doing a 15 minute set and i will be performing a couple songs for my album reinvention so if you haven't get a chance to listen or download my album reinvention is available all online platforms like spotify apple music google play all that hoopla hoopla <laughs> and so fire on our next um episode um we are going to have a special fret tea talk talking about not only my first festival experience but we are going to like talk about our first festival gig experience so make sure you follow us on our social media know when we're going to release that and also make sure you follow me personally on my social media i'm doing some behind the scenes before the big gig so make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel doing some stuff on my another episode of life as an artist doing some preppings for this gig doing behind the scenes like beautification you know my hair nails unboxing stuff <laughs> my outfit what i'm gonna wear all that stuff so it's gonna be a lot of behind the scenes and stuff preparing so make sure you go to our merch store it's um fretsisters.storeenvy.com to purchase a lot of like t-shirts we got t-shirts hoodies we have coffee mugs here we have socks lots of that so we got a lot of things <laughs> i'm gonna stop all the rambling up in here and when we come back we are going international once again as we talk to norway's own tora arga so keep on listening Want to start a podcast but don't have equipment nor money? Well, try out Anchor. Anchor is a free app that gives you everything you need in one place, which you can use right from your phone or computer. They distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere, such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so much more. Oh, and did I tell you that it is completely free? That is the magic word, free. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And we're back. So today's guest is a blues-inspired guitarist from Norway. She is the lead vocalist of the blues rock pop band, Tora. And we have featured her on one of our daily posts on social media and we love her so much we decided to get her in so everyone let's welcome Tora how are you today I'm good how are you I am fine on behalf of Fret Sisters we'd like to thank you for joining in with us we've been like watching your videos and and following you on Instagram and you are amazing to us I was like we got to get her on we got to get her on (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, let's um everybody to get to know you a little bit lot more. Um, what is like your earliest memory of music? Like that you came from a musical family or anything like that, or you just like like that got you falling in love to do music? Yeah, I'm definitely from a musical family, and um, you know, I just grew up in a house where there was always um, music, singing, dancing, and and uh, so I I think. Uh, music is just a, a part of me that I have never really, you know, 
thought that much about. It's just there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that's um, yeah, basically. So why did the guitar, why did guitar um, was there like an instrument you played before first or since then or like just why did you decide you want to pick up that guitar? Well, you know, I really don't have like this great guitar story because I <laughs> uh, I played piano for many years and I did a lot of acting and singing. And uh, at the age of like 15, I, I saw this movie called School of Rock with uh, Jack Black. Uh, and there were like these kids in this movie uh, playing instruments and they were great and they were so young and I was like well if I can be great at playing guitar rock and roll guitar I'm will be the coolest person ever um, so I just picked it up and it just makes sense to me you know it, and it always has and I I love I love guitar and everything I can you know say with it it's my it's my instrument you know yeah it's just like displaying like you have nothing to say but the guitar actually speaking for you yeah, and it's also the fact that, you know, growing up in a family where everyone does music, I mm-hmm. wanted to do something different. I didn't want to do music. Uh, so I just kind of locked it inside for many years. And at the age of 15, actually discovering this instrument, which is, you know, it's melodical, it's rhythmical. You can play chords and just sing to it. You know, the guitar is so much. I think I I really got all the music inside of me out through the through the guitar, if that makes sense. <laughs> so what is your, um, like, influences, like, um, as a guitarist or uh, as an artist in general? You know, um, I'm, like, the biggest Michael Jackson fan, uh, and I've been that since I was a young girl, and uh, he's, like, my, yeah, he's, like, my number one. And when it comes to guitar players, I, I love John Mayer. Um, I love Derek Trucks, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, of course. Slash is cool. Yeah, John Schofield is great as well. Yeah, when I was like watching your videos and then I was like seeing you play, I heard a little kind of like that John Mayer tone when you were playing. I'm like, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what you so you were like self-taught or did you like took any lessons or anything? No, I didn't take any lessons because I, I think I'm very stubborn and I like to do things my way. <laughs> And uh, having someone sitting next to me and telling me, like, no, that's wrong. You shouldn't be doing it like that. You sh-. I think I would just get, you know, frustrated. So I like to lock myself in, in a room and just figure it out myself. And that's what I've been doing, basically. Well, can you, like, tell us a little bit about your um, your first gig experience? Yeah, um... Well, as I mentioned, I I did a lot of acting from a very young age. So I think like my first experience on stage was, I think I was eight years old. Um, And I did a lot of acting for many years. But then, like my first gig experience with the band, I think I just started the band and just made music with them. And I just booked gigs. That was the first thing I did. Even before we had our first rehearsal, I just booked gigs because I think I knew coming from a musical family that you have to be out and you have to play to gain the experience and to become a good musician. You can't just be in a room with your friends and play music. You have to be out there. And uh, so I really don't, we just played all the time everywhere as much as we could. Uh, and I'm glad we did. Well, before I got a hold of you, um, I actually got a chance to listen to your single called Desire and, I've li- and I really loved it. Um, uh, can you give us a little um, explanation behind that song and uh, what made you write that write that song? Well, um, <laughs> that, that song is, you know, I I love to write about, like, if I can maybe call it, like, forbidden love in many ways, because I am gay and I'm open about that. And I have experienced the fact that, you know, if I feel something for another girl, you know, that might not be okay with everyone and you just you just uh, like someone from a distance and that feeling is so terrifying but also beautiful and 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 so a lot of my music is about that feeling I think uh, you want something but you can't have it and you're afraid because it's not like normal if you know what I mean mm-hmm. uh, so Desire is like a song of uh, just if I just can have two minutes with you I'm sure I can talk you into actually looking at me in a different way. You know, it's kind of like a full of confidence kind of vibe to it. 
Yeah, I, I actually felt that vibe on that song. And I, I'm I'm not gay, but I really support it. Love is love. Yeah. I love it's love. And I felt that when I was listening Thank to you. that. Um, do you have like any solo projects in the words when you're not with the band? Um, no. You know, I think of my band and all of that. It's it, it's project in many ways because um I write all the music and the lyrics and all of that and I also you know, I, it's, it's my band, but it's it's me, so it's a mixture of that. It's just a lot of Torah. <laughs> so when you do your music, and what, like, consider your style of music? Well, um, that's a fun question. I think um, it's a mixture of, uh, you know, as I mentioned, you know, the Michael Jackson vibe, that kind mm-hmm. of rock and roll thing, but also blues guitar. And, uh, and I love soul music and R&B music. And I'm a huge fan of Motown. And and uh, I think that's like the, the, the basics. Um, we mix those together and you get something. <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking when I was listening, you got that blues soul vibe. Yeah. I think you like that blues soul. Mm-hmm. You kind of yeah. like, like a little rockish, but you, you just put that soul, whatever genre and you just put your soul in it yeah it's, it's like it just don't even have a genre you just don't you just go outside the box and just put you in it and that's what i what is great what i like about you and your music well, thank you so much that's that's a beautiful compliment i think that's right because i just really don't care that much and i don't write music to please anyone else i just write music that i like and that makes me smile mm-hmm. so thank you for that thank you well, you most welcome. Um, so let's do something fun with this next question. Like, if you're not performing, you're not recording, or anything mm-hmm. like like, what is Tora like off stage? Like, what do you like to do when you like not doing music or anything like that? What do you like to do for fun? For fun, uh, I like to work, and that's kind of my. <laughs> uh, uh, wow, I I like to play PlayStation, um, and. Uh, Ah, wow. I, my, I love my friends when I have the time to, you know, be with them. And uh, But, you know, basically, I, I'm out traveling so much that I really like to be alone mm-hmm. and just spend some time with the, with me and, and my thoughts. And when you get home from a tour or something, you have a lot of experiences. And, you know, you just need to work through them and get back to, you know, real life. And Because it's a, it's a weird kind of job to have. So, yeah. Yeah, because self self care is definitely important, especially if you're traveling a lot, you're doing a lot of work, and you ain't got enough time to work on yourself, and that causes a lot of stress, and stress causing a lot of medical issues. <laughs> right. Yep. Absolutely. So I, I try to, I try my best to spend time with just me, and you know, as we all know, that maybe the most scary thing in the whole world because then you have to face your own fears and thoughts and everything that's good and bad. But I try to do that as much as I can. I try. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, doing to my research, um, I would say congratulations on this one because you was like the first female guitarist that's been signed to an endorsement deal with um, Chapman Guitars. Like, how did you got that opportunity? Yeah, wow, that was... um, it was through uh, Instagram, definitely. Um, and I think, you know, they liked what I was doing and uh, wanted to work with me. And that was really a, a breakthrough because, uh, you know, you, you got my name out there, not just in Norway, but people in the UK and uh, started to know my name, which again led to now we are doing a UK tour in April, which is a big deal for us. Uh, coming from a small country and everything, you know, it's, um, yeah, the Chapman deal has been very important to my career and I'm very grateful for it. Wow. Yeah, and that was a big history, like you the first female. Yeah, I know, that's, um, I, I like that, you know, I really like that and I want to be the first female in many other, you know, I just, that whole thing is so cool And but it's also kind of like weird, like first female and it's like 2020. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but again, we have to start somewhere, and I'm just grateful to be a part of that and actually changing that whole thing. That's cool. See, women, is, we are taking over. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, because some people don't don't know that, that we're taking over, but we are. 
we it's are. Slowly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have like any uh, advice for other um, artists that is coming up on how to na- navigate in the music business as us uh, women? Because it's kind of hard to, um, you know, deal in this music industry in this male-dominated world. So, do you have any advice to give? Yeah, I think um, you can't be afraid, and you 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 just have to, you know, believe in yourself. It's kind of like blah to say, but what I mean is, you just you just have to believe that what you know and what you are is more than good enough. But you also have to work your ass off every single day because you have to be so good that people can't even the fact that you're a female can be like uh, can be a that's not the point you have to be so good that people don't think about so hard work and never say no do all the gigs you can gigs just do them and do them 100% uh, and be out there meet people be social and and learn from everyone and talk to people and just be be everywhere and absorb everything you can and uh and don't be afraid, you know? I think a lot of girls, especially young girls, are afraid to say something stupid or to play the wrong note, to wear the wrong clothes, you know, all of these things. But when it all comes down to it, no one really cares as long as you know how to play or how to sing or, you you know, just just be great. And I think you're, you'll get there. I like that advice. And I'm actually writing notes right now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell our listeners where to follow you on social media? Yeah, well, you know, I'm active on Instagram. uh, So you can follow me there. um, And also on Facebook, it's like Tora and Band Page. That's where you can find out where we are playing gigs and all these things. And we are on Spotify. You know, everywhere. Well, there you have it, ladies and gents. I'd like to thank Tor for joining in with us. Make sure you follow her on social media. We will put it on the show notes and links so you can follow her. Make sure you stream and download her song, Desire. It's fire. I loved it. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. And if you're in the UK, make sure you follow her on social media to where she's going to be in UK for her upcoming tour and see her live let us know see us show us videos we definitely will put it in our social media to promote more and we will spread the word so i am sean shawnee sean marshall and thank you for listening bye bye hey riff girl what you got If you want to learn more about this lick, hit us up on Facebook or Instagram at Fret Sisters or email us at fretsistersmusic at gmail.com. Peace and love. <laughs>